history of jazz and its various forms. So this is where I shut up and well, I don't want to bore you too much, but just just to, you know, most people think of the guitar uh, in conjunction with rock and roll. You know, it was most popular, made most popular during the era of early rock and roll. Uh, it was a tool of, like, rebellion and, uh, of course, almost a stage prop for some, you know. Musicians would use it to whirl around on the stage. Before that, um, in jazz, it was sort of, it had a secondary role. In the early days of jazz, as Sushil mentioned, uh, most of the musicians were, were playing brass, you know, brass dominated the sound, you know, trumpets That's and saxophones. Country, country sound, don't they use the guitar a lot? Well, I was just about to get to that. So oh, then, in, in, no, 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 it's okay. In, in jazz music, it, it took a secondary role, but the primary function of the guitar in that same era, to your point, Jane, correct? Jan. Jan, okay. To Jan's point, uh, guitar was used in country blues. Yeah. So a lot of African Americans during the Great Migration and prior to that era in Mississippi, it's called Mississippi Delta Blues, the guitar was the primary vehicle for that style. Jazz and blues have always kind of danced around each other and been similar but gone in different branches in different ways. So in that in that era, the guitar was used as a rhythm instrument, you know, you know to keep the beat while someone sang a song. Not so much a feature lead instrument, and it was a solo instrument. So what happened is jazz, along with a lot of musicians and people who were moving north during the Great Migration, moved from New Orleans to Chicago. And there in Chicago, two musicians who were originally, well actually one was a blues musician from New Orleans named Lonnie Johnson, moved up to Chicago and started hearing the sounds of jazz and uh, the band started getting bigger and louder. Another musician who was actually from Pennsylvania named Eddie Lang, who was an Italian American, came over to, to Chicago and started hearing bands and playing, and they formed a duo. So they were actually the first, the first group to popularize jazz guitar was two guitars together on a recording, and that was from 1928. Now before I put you all to sleep, I'll just say this. Something changed really dramatically about the role of the guitar in the 19, early 1930s, and it was, a, it was a technology. Does anyone want to take a guess what, the, what that might have been? Anyone have a, an idea? What might, have, what might have changed in the 1930s to totally change the game for guitar? Recording? Close, he's, he's getting closer, electricity. Okay, there was no electric guitar as we know it today wow. prior to 1932 when, uh, when two, two men, uh, one named George Beauchamp and another named uh, Adolf Rickenbacker. Anyone Beatles fans? You like the Beatles? So if you like the Beatles, the instruments they played were Rickenbacker guitars. So the original inventor of the electromagnetic pickup was Adolf Rickenbacker and George Beauchamp, two men. So they, they figured out a way to wrap coils around a magnet and convert the, the uh, vibrations of the strings to an electrical signal. At first, there was no electric guitars. There were just these pickups placed in the guitar. So obviously, as you can imagine, what that changed is the volume level of the guitar which allowed the guitar to now be a featured lead instrument that everyone could hear over these increasingly loud and large bands that were playing this jazz music. So one man I'll mention, and then we'll start playing, was the first guy named, his name was Charlie Christian. And if you've never heard that name, I would say go, go check him out and listen to him. He's one of the most important figures in jazz uh, for a lot of reasons, but primarily being he was the first lead guitar player in a jazz ensemble, big band setting, to be featured as a soloist, so you could hear him playing, you know, like I said before, guitar was a rhythm instrument, accompaniment, playing underneath the horns. This was the first time he was out. He was playing the lines that the horns would play before, and he would do solos, and people would buy him records to hear him as a leader. So he not only was the first guy, he also came to New York and was going to jam sessions. Jam sessions, which Sushil has organized many, on Roosevelt Island is an environment where musicians get together, no rehearsal, uh, and you just play tunes, right? Isn't that the way it's usually done? <laughs> Sadly, given, given the monetary constraints of the jazz industry, that is often the way it's done. But, but the jam session was particularly important in the thir late 30s, early 40s in New York City because all these jazz musicians who have been touring around the country, including Charlie Christian, were going to this place in Harlem called Minton's Playhouse. I, I see a nod here that you may recognize or have known the name of it. It was an incredibly important breeding ground for the kind of jazz we're really going to play today and most of the kind of modern jazz that you hear now. 
Um, and this is where Charlie Christian started to really take flight and play longer solos with other horn players. Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Thelonious Monk, if you've ever heard of those names, were all, were all growing up around this time there. So obviously, needless to say, from there, the guitar is off in jazz. And there's many, many names I could mention. Uh, but from that inflection point, the guitar then became a feature instrument of jazz. Now, I want to point one more thing out before we start. The kind of guitars Sushil and I have are specifically jazz guitars because they're, they're hollow and they're bigger, right? And these were the ones primarily used in the early days, 30s and 40s. Most of the time, if you see a rock and roll band, you see a solid body guitar, a Stratocaster or a Les Paul. You know, you look at, I mean, name your rock band, ACDC or Kiss or Led Zeppelin. They had solid guitars because they could be much louder. Um, and you know the hollow would make it feedback. Um, so from that point on, those solid body guitars became really like the, the popular image when you see and think of a, a guitar player. So with that, I hope that was somewhat informative. We're going to start with a classic old standard. Good round of applause for Professor. It's interesting stuff. You know, I will just say, if nothing else, I know it's it's hard when someone's shouting facts at you and. and Putting out names, it's hard to like retain everything they say. If you've never heard of the name Charlie Christian, Charlie Christian, fairly easy name to remember. Go listen to some Charlie Christian, and he was the, he was really the first guy to start it all out, and he's, he's amazing. So yeah, we're gonna play a tune yeah. called All of Me, all of me is which it. is an old tune. So you're gonna yeah. hear tunes that go back. Uh, one of them goes back to the twenties. Oh yeah, okay. uh, this was the early 30s, I believe. This was 30s, yeah. and uh, it's a pretty much a classic for two guitar players to play on because you'll hear it and you'll know it, right? So uh, let's get started. So. 